All right, we're back with episode three of Let's Build a Nuclear Power Plant. This is Captain Jack. I'm one of the Minecrafters, and we are building a self-sustaining nuclear power plant. Okay, I'm just going to get right back into it. Um, let's see. I need to. I need to clean the floor underneath some more of this, I believe. Um, now, you know what I'll do? I am going to plan on using import and export buses for the recyclers. And unfortunately, these recyclers are going to take up a lot of power. Um, I'm really not sure. This is what worries me the most about this whole uh, self-sustaining setup is the fact that I'm not sure <laughs> if it'll be able to keep up. Um, but I do have a backup plan in case it does not work. Alright, recyclers. Since I'm not really sure How many of these I'll need? Oh goodness gracious. They're gonna need overclocker upgrades to keep them running at a halfway decent pace. Yeah, that breeder might get an overhaul inside there um, to function as both a breeder and a power source, which is not the typical use for something like that. All right. Here we go. So I have an input on the top, output on the right. And if I do that, I'm not going to be able to put two next to each other. So that will how well that that will how that is how they will need to be set up. These things are going to be running 24/7 and using a massive amount of power. Holy crap. Um yeah, I'm already rethinking this. Let's just roll with what we got and pray it works at the end. Okay, so I have a strip there. And then this strip needs to be the opposite. It needs to come off here. There, okay. So this is going to be the recycling center. Um, no more night time. Let's get some torches just in case. So so you don't strain your eyes looking at what I'm doing. All right, well, we have import and export buses. Um, these are all going to be exporting scrap. Four, five, six. And each one of these is going to tax the system. There we go. And I'm also going to need import buses. And see how the machine is orientated? I don't know if that's a word, but it is now. We're going to need to put these in the sides. Good thing the igneous extruders don't need power. This whole operation would be totally bagged. Um, what the? Okay. I hate when I have to do crap like this. There we go. No, I don't. There we go. There we go. Can you just can you just please go where I want you to? Thank you. Okay. All right. So here's a scrap generation setup, and I will have to configure all these to export cobblestone into the system. Um, I don't know if I want to have the system take care of the scrap into scrap boxes or not, but that will be determined later. Because what I need first is I need a steady source of power and I believe I need to finish some of these walls because I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to keep my sanity if I don't finish the walls alright now I did say in a previous episode that I wasn't sure how I was gonna lay out the pattern for this as far as aesthetically because of mm, because of a lot of things I actually think that this 
will work better. Okay, so here I am. I'm at a crossroads here. Um, I'm going to actually reduce the size of my GUI, which is how I usually. Well, okay, that's a little bit much. Um, what? There's no in between. All right, anyways, maybe this is how I normally play. I have no idea. I usually like like to see it in a compact uh, form here. I can go. I'm really tempted to just go with the gold um, just because that's what all my other reactors look like, but I don't want it to be like all the other reactors because all of those were not practical. <laughs> um, well, most of them. I'm not sure if that's true or not. Oh, I could use copper... Silver, crystal, black decay. Ooh, where's white decay, actually? White decay may look really cool. I don't think I'm allowed to use white decay, though. No. I don't. Oh, that's only to feed the beast. Why, how do I even have... Oh, that must be the only kind of decay in Tech at Light. Okay, I know. There's like four or five different kinds of decay in uh, Feed the Beast. But we're not feeding the beast, are we? We're ticket lighting. Um, just bear with me while I go through here and rule out every other possibility besides gold. Just makes so much sense. Ugh. Don't want to use gold, though. I feel like it would look so much cooler in a different block. Red alloy block. That is not red. Um... Blue, what the deuce? Why are these inverted? Okay. Okay. Um, 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 um. What am I going to use, guys? Give me some, give me some inspiration, even though it's already recorded. Nah, I'm just taking the gold. It's, oh, Okay. Not going to spend a lot of time on this. Um, it's really the guts that actually matter the most here. So let me change the GUI back so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. And we're going to put this down. Do, 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 just like a bumblebee. I'm just a little black rain cloud. Alright. I promise I'll never even attempt to sing or put words together in any sort of lyrical fashion ever again in this series. That was from Winnie the Pooh. Okay. There we go. Alright. So, now, since the gold is so overpowering, it makes the black... I should just be an interior decorator. Um, it makes the black more bearable. So... Let's build this up a little bit more. I actually could have just used marble too, I guess, but I think it's good to throw some color over black and white because black and white typically go with any anything. Um, they're mostly anything, except for navy blue. Don't ever do that. Um... <coughs> go. So I can actually have the breeder cha chamber maybe taper off a little bit towards the end. I'll just have to keep in mind um, what types of wires and, and stuff will be connected to that thing and the force field so the force field block doesn't cut through anything and make it look stupid. Okay. Oh, see, this is what I'm talking about. What is wrong with me? Um, all right, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll do something with that later. But you see how there's three up here and two down here. That is just not working out for me. <laughs> just not working out for me. Um, anyways, maybe I'll put some glass or something. Or I don't know what I'll do. But I'll leave it for now. All right. So the breeder reactor. I do want to get the breeder reactor up and running. 
what I also want to do is limit myself limit myself to um, a certain amount of uranium because as everybody knows um, unless you're breeding uranium bees and feed the beast um, this stuff is not attainable through any other method besides quarries or manual mining so what I'm gonna do is I, I am gonna spawn in uranium and if somebody has a problem with that they can take it up with a hand grenade um, I think I only need a couple of these Again, I may have to modify this this whole setup. One, two, LZH, condensator, okay. I may have to modify this. Um, here, let me sh actually show you guys what design. Oh, I hate when it does that. Uh, I'll show you guys what design I'm after. This is the... Are you kidding me? It's gone. I had... Oh, here it is, right here. Um, I don't know why. This is a reactor planner version 3. And it's just not showing it down here. But in any case, my design will be I think this is what I did. No, 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 that's the wrong design. We're going to do LZH condensators. We're going to do four quad cells. And then we're going to put near depleted. And this will change from a Mark 1 SUCEB reactor into a um, breeder reactor as soon as I put these isotope cells inside of here so you can see that happening there breeder EB instead of a uh, um, regular reactor so we're at a mark 2 breeder right now um, yellow means everything is kosher and safe okay so we have a full cycle no cooldown infinite timer here it's gonna put out um, 240 EU per tick and it's going to put out a total of 48 million EU. Now, it will take a while to put out that much, but uh, it will happen. Um, this is what's going on, or what will be going on, in the rest of the reactor. And the reactor heat plating is just so that I can crank the temperature of the reactor. Um, it serves no other purpose. Um, and that temperature, in turn, is going to allow these depleted isotope cells to recharge a lot faster. Um, what I'm actually thinking about is, now this is putting out 240 EU per tick, and I'm not entirely sure if that's going to be enough for what I have in mind. So I might have to take out a couple of these and possibly put in um, two more quad cells. And what two more quad cells are also going to do is it's going to tax the system a little bit more, and it's going to have a couple effects. See, we're at back at a safe reactor. If I take this out, um, cooldown time is impossible. Uh, this is a really awesome tool. You can download this from the IC2 uh, forums. Um, so now we've gone up to 440 EU per tick. So effectively, we've almost doubled our power output um, and gone to 88 million EU per tick, uh, which should fill all of my storage units twice in a full cycle, which I shouldn't actually need um, because once they're full, they're not going to drain very fast. Um, but this is, this is that backup plan that I was telling you about. Um, I, I may need to do this. The problems that, that this comes with is that the maximum melting temperature is reduced, or the maximum heat that the reactor can contain is reduced, so I'm, I'm not going to be able to heat up the reactor to as high of a temperature as I would actually want it to, and in turn that makes it so the cells regenerate at a slower pace. Okay, so uh, this reactor planner is a really awesome tool. This is just kind of... Um, an idea or the ideas that I have going here. I think this was featured on my breeder reactor tutorial. And if you really uh, want to know how these work, you can check that out. Um, but that's my plan. We have the potential to increase the um, amount that this breeder puts out. And you can see that it still maintains its status as a breeder. It's a Mark II full cycle. Um, I just lose a lot of benefits when I start throwing more quad cells in there. Okay, so um, we're going to start off with a four quad cell quad cell breeder and um, hopefully that works so we got one two three four we're gonna get these LZH condensators and this one will cool both of these and this one will cool both of these so that reduces the amount of lapis actually too I forgot to say that that'll reduce the amount of lapis it needs to keep this reactor cool 
the addition of two more LZH condensators is going to tax the system even further because it's going to take UU matter and put it towards trying to keep this thing cool when it really shouldn't have to. Um, so that's another issue. Let's get some let's get some heat plating going here, and the heat plating actually heat plating can stack, but it doesn't do anything if it stacks. So if you get really excited that you think you've discovered something awesome, you haven't. So I'll bust your bubble right now because that definitely happened to me. Okay, and um, the cells are going to go in the sides here. And actually, I can just go ahead and make those right now. I'm going to take near depleted cells. I'm going to take coal dust, which is right here. Um, you cannot make these in creative mode. I don't care. I mean, you can find this out for yourself. But these isotope cells, these depleted isotope cells, if you make them and put them in a breeder, they recharge in one second. Um, and there have been people that have tried to tell me that their breeder reactor can recharge about 50 cells per second, and that is just simply not true. So this depleted isotope cell has a damage value of 9999. As you can see on the far right of the screen there, this one does not have a damage value, and that will cause it to recharge immediately. So the only way that you can actually make these is by combining near depleted cells and cold dust, and we're just going to get a bunch here. Um, let's take this out. I'm not sure how many I can sustain here. We're going to take these. We're gonna, ooh, 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 ooh. Well, let's take these. Let's put them all inside of here, just like that. I'm going to go ahead and delete these here. Delete these because they don't need them. And this will be our preliminary breeder reactor setup here. Okay, so. This quad cell is going to recharge all these um, isotope cells here, and this one's going to recharge these three. This one is actually going to recharge at a faster pace than everything else because it's adjacent to two quad uranium cells, but that really doesn't matter too much. Um, the breeder is not going to be fully automated, just like the one in the Captain Corporation, because it is entirely too hard to automate them, and I would need an entirely separate molecular assembly chamber to do it. Um, and I'll probably end up showing you guys how I got a breeder to automate itself 99% of the time. There is always a chance that it will screw up. Ingram says he has a solution to it. I don't know if that's true, but it probably is because he's a genius with machines. Anyways, all right, so power's running down through the bottom into our force field. Power's running into AE, powering this. And if I flip this on, theoretically, <laughs> theoretically everything should work fine now before I make an absolutely epic mistake and blow a massive hole underneath that reactor down there let's um, let's take a look at how our power is coming out um, MFSU's output 512 e per tick which is ex um, that's high voltage and that's coming down it's coming into this force field core, which it doesn't have anything yet. We're at transmit range 32 blocks, which may not need a, the transmitter or the range extender on that thing. But regardless, there it is. Um, that power trunk line is coming down through the bottom into the AE system, which can accept high voltage. And it is coming down into the recyclers, which absolutely cannot accept high voltage. So had I flipped the switch on that breeder, the entire basement here would have gone up in smoke. So I'm going to take a minute and I'm going to load these things up with overclockers and transformer upgrades. Okay. So I got overclockers and transformer upgrades. Every time I put a transform upgrade inside a machine, it's going to increase the tier of voltage that it can accept. So it can accept low voltage to start. If I add one, it can accept medium. And if I add two, it'll be able to accept high voltage. Now, this is a lot of overclockers. Um, doo -doo -doo. Take one out. Here we go. I am using the scroll wheel to do this, if you were wondering. 
it is just simply much faster. And also, if you had a question earlier about how I dumped all those cells into the reactor, immediately I was shift clicking or shift drag clicking. Okay, so we're going to use a total of 64 overclocker upgrades, or I mean 128 overclocker upgrades, and a bunch of transformer upgrades. We've got eight of these. Two of these, two of these. This always puts, if you use the scroll wheel for this, it's always going to put it in that top box up there. So that's why usually I remember to wait and then put these two in and then just flop them over. And then that's good. It doesn't matter what order you do them in. Oh, I messed up again. Whatever. That's just an easier way to do it. Because then the secondary um, scroll wheel deposit location happens to be over there so there we go two uh, the more hot keys you know the better off you'll be okay okay apparently I need eight more of these eight and two all right there we go so these are all going to be able to accept um, the high voltage running out of the MFSUs I actually might be able to tear down the voltage and still have these run. I, I'm not sure. I'd rather not tear down power and then have to redo everything. Um, all right, so let's put these here. We're going to power through the bottom. Like so. There we go. Okay. Um, before I get upset at myself, I'm just going to put these one more lower. And the reason for that is um, I still want to be able to walk down here. So I'm going to put a floor. The floor is going to rise right up against the recyclers here. Okay, so I have, I'm going to have to configure these to input scrap, like I said earlier. Um, and now the scrap generation room should be set up and this will increase the pace at which the mass fabricator makes UU matter. Another thing I can actually do is I could put another line of scrap machines, which I don't have, recyclers, right here and I can configure them in the same way if I do run into an issue where this thing cannot possibly output enough scrap and scrap boxes to keep the uh, mass fabricator going, I just don't want to overshoot the power just yet until I find out exactly how powerful this is going to be. Um, if it's not enough to keep up with the system, uh, then I will end up av adding more rows, which may cause me to need that extra breeder reactor upgrade to put out a little bit more EU per tick in order to have this factory sustain itself. These these things are never actually going to stop, which is a huge obstacle that I'm going to have to overcome. So here we go. Next, I'm going to need to put, well, there's no particular order which I'm doing anything here. Um, I'm trying to set it up and then provide power to it. Oh, what do I need? Um, I need reactor things. I need a field projector. I need coolant injectors. Um, let me grab those buses back. I'm going to need import and export buses. I'm going to need blank ARS cards to put inside of these. And okay, let's let's set up the breeder because this is going to be key to the system. I need to put a coolant injector, which can go anywhere. Um, it needs to receive. I'm going to put a coolant injector here. I'm going to put the actual reactor force field here. And then I'm going to link the reactor with the force field by right clicking the blank ARS card. 
and getting a force field frequency card. I right click the force field core. I'm going to put that in there. Um, it is linked, it just has no power, so it doesn't know that yet. Um, the coolant is going to require an export bus, and that's going to craft on demand lapis lazuli and dump it inside of there. What I'll also need to do is I'll need to be importing depleted isotope cells and exporting um, re-enriched isotope cells. Oh, really? I usually don't play with the thing this small. I guess I have to type the whole thing, huh? Okay. Um, okay, so these all need to be linked. Now the force field is going to cut shift click. There we go. Shift click. The force field is going to going to cut through that block right there and it's going to also cut through this block right here so I'll wrap this around like this connect these I'll wrap this um, I can do it through the top that might look better than through the front there we go I am just um, accounting for the fact that the force field will be there. I know I keep saying that, but definitely something to keep in mind. Um, this thing will be linked into the main applied energistic system, like so. Okay, so now we are wired in with the breeder. And now I need to make sure that the molecular assembler chamber knows how to make knows how to make the lapis lazuli. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take UU matter. Um, we're going to encode this. UU matter is made like this. You use 4 to make 9. I'm going to put my blank pattern inside here. I'm going to encode it. I'm going to bring that inside here. I'm going to put this pattern um, inside the molecular assembler chamber. And if I hold shift, I can see that it knows how to make 9 lapis with 4 UU matter. And right now we don't have any UU matter in the system. Um, if you actually were playing on a real world, you probably have an excess of, la of lapis lazuli. So allow me that um, freedom to spawn in coolant for this at first. So I'm going to get a bunch of lapis lazuli. I'm going to put it in there. Okay. Um, I do have the option, and I think it's one that I'm going to choose to jam this with dirt and the reason I'm doing that is because um, there's really no need to have this much lapis and I don't want the system to be wasting a ton of UU matter um, again because I'm worried about power consumption and UU consumption I want the majority of the UU being uh, put back into the creation of new quad cells so I'm going to jam this up with dirt and only ever keep three stacks of lapis lazuli inside this coolant injector which should be plenty since it only has two LZH condensators. So um, that's a little trick that you can do to um, limit your reactors from taxing your system too much. Now, as far as I know, the only thing left for me to do here is to actually provide a signal so that this reactor can be turned on and off. Now, I'm not sure if I'm happy with this. I'm not sure. Okay, I'm going to take this card back out because I am not happy. I'm going to break this a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the reactor containment field projector on the front. Oh, come on. Okay. Put that inside there. Destroy that. I'm going to put the import bus that is importing the depleted or the re-enriched isotope cells. I'm going to put that over there. Um, there we go. We have a relatively symmetrical reactor. Is it too OCD to do this? It's never OCD to do this. There we go. <laughs> okay, so that looks better. Eh, just for my own peace of mind. It's only one extra cable. It's not doing anything anyway. Okay. Um, so now I have this. It's linked to the reactor, even though it doesn't say and all I need to do is provide 
a signal to the reactor to turn it on. And once I turn it on, I'm going to pray that this works properly. And I don't see why it wouldn't. Um, so the power is going to come out through here, load up these. I'm not sure if it's going to um, break up the power distribution between the four different things and the machines down there. Um, but regardless, it does need to be juiced up. Um, but before I turn it up, I do want to make a couple additions to the control room because I want to see at all times how much um, both reactors are putting out. And for that, I'm going to need these industrial information panels, which have gone down in infamy as probably the most frequently asked question in all of Minecraft or history. What are those pretty signs? Something to the effect of that. I'm going to grab myself some color upgrades and I'm going to grab myself two remote sensor kits. Okay, so here we go. So I need to link the breeder reactor and the main reactor to a monitoring station, which technically could be anywhere. Um, I could put monitors here and here. I'm not sure if I want to go that route or not. Um, I would like sort of the ME system or place to be the main the main viewing area. So I think what I will do is let's get some marble. Take some marble there. Um, bring this kind of to a close. Just like that. And what I will do is get some of this. All right, so right here is going to be the housing for the industrial information panels. And I only need a lever in the back. So I want these to be on at all times so I can make sure that everything is under control, Gromit. Everything's under control, Gromit. Okay, we'll also grab it this here. Flip that on. I'm going to put... That was not what I was supposed to do. This pops out one. That was my mistake. Okay. Technically that doesn't matter. Shift click. I hate having to do that. Shift click. Okay. Here we go. Cover up these. Put that there. At the very least, we'll do that. Not sure how the outside is going to look. Um, that'll kind of come together at the end. Is this symmetrical? Something's off. It's this this block right here. Okay. So here we go. We have our two industrial information panels, and this one I forgot to put a lever on, so I'll sneak one in there. Click. Okay. Up and running. Okay. So this is going to be the main reactor monitoring station. And where is it? Okay, I'm going to put a card in there, and I'm going to get the reactor sensor location kit. I'm going to right click on the reactor. It's going to give me a sensor location card. The breeder reactor is going to be over here, and we'll name that breeder. Breeder <laughs> breeder reactor. There we go. Um, let's change the screen color to uh, to yellow and black. It's out of range. Bite me. Um, we'll do this. Change yellow and black. This one will definitely be out of range. There we go. Got my card. Right clicked. I'm going to put that inside of here. This is going to be out of range too. Okay. Let's grab some range upgrades. Should only need like one. Okay. Two. There we go. Should only need one. Here we go. Okay. So that's the breeder reactor. And this is going to be our main reactor. Generic name. Whatever. 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 Okay. So now we can monitor the heat. And you see this one is um, 
The max heat is 84,000, and this one's only 10,000. That's because we have the reactor heat plating inside of that reactor over there. Um, it's not putting out anything. It's turned off at the moment. All right. Do I want to have an emergency cutoff switch? Do I want to? I think that I do. I also think... Um, that I can do that down below. That will be an addition that will come later. Um, I am confident that my reactors don't blow up, so I really don't need that. But if in the event that something drastically horrible takes place, we'll put that as a backup. Okay. All right, here's the scary part turning this thing on and we can't even turn it on yet. Forget it. Forget the scary part because it's not even a real thing yet, okay? Um, what we're going to do is we're going to put um, some controls. We're going to put some reactor controls up here and I do want to be able to control the entire facility from one central location. So I'm actually going to extend this room farther than I originally had planned. Okay. Do that. We're gonna do this, and then we're gonna get some paver. Put that in here. And what this is gonna be, what I'm building right now, is a circuit housing for um, the wireless remotes that will turn this turn this baby on and off. Right. Okay. So here we go. These are the same. Still looks like a hungry hippo. Crap. Um. All right. So let's decide where our switches are going to be, and then cram all the circuitry, circuitry, excuse me, um, in between there. Let's do. No, let's not do that. We can do that later. I was going to put an on-off indicator with an industrial information panel, but there's really not a need for it. Um, all right, so this is going to send a signal. So we're going to need a wireless receiver and transmitter in both cases. Um, the circuitry for the breeder is going to be a little bit more complex, I think. Uh, I don't even know how I did it in the Captain Corporation. I'll have to take a look at it again. I think I did it with... Uh, it's a it's a not gate and oh it's an and gate an and gate and um that's it yeah it's just an and gate and that will cause the breeder to shut off red wire red alloy wire there we go it's going to come off of here right now i'm just going to set this up um really simply Just so I have room to improve, I'm going to take a screwdriver and change the orientation of this so that it will accept the signal. And since there's nobody else in this world, the breeder reactor is going to be reactor number 10. And the regular reactor is going to be reactor number 20. So let's set up that right now. There we go. Put that there. Put this here. Put this here. Um, and this is going to be 20. Okay, very good. So these are the same, right? Yes, they are the same. So when I flick this on, it's going to um, pulse a signal through the block, and it's going to hit that wireless receiver. And now I just need to link the wireless receiver up to the nuclear reactor. Now, I need two things to happen. I need um, the reactor containment field to turn on, which actually in actuality I don't actually think this needs to turn on I think this will automatically turn on when the reactor gets too hot but I feel way safer if it's always on okay so we're gonna need some wireless receivers um, I can just put 
I'm going to put this here just for looks, but there's no reason to use a reactor um, connector right there. It's not actually sending a signal through anything. Um, these wireless receivers don't work very well in the fact that um, you can't wrap wire around a block and have it catch it. So this is going to work fine uh, for our purposes. Our uh, breeder is going to be reactor 1. Okay. And this is going to send a signal. It's going to pass the redstone signal over the um, reactor containment field. It's going to turn that on. And it's also going to turn the breeder reactor on by supplying a redstone signal to the breeder. Okay, and like I said, we'll hook up that um, overload panel. Or I, I, You know, I don't even know what that stupid thing is called. Monitor, monitor, is it? Remote, th yeah, it's a remote thermal monitor, and that'll just send a signal if it exceeds a certain amount of of uh, of heat. Um, we may or may not need that. Maybe I'll pull one in for the fun of it. Okay. So what's going to happen here is this is going to flip on. Oh, it turned it on. Oh. <laughs> oh, Captain, we got a problem. We got a problem. Okay, emergency, emergency, emergency. Where is the export bus? Where is the export bus? Please go away. Okay. This is so fun <laughs> dealing with all the problems. All right, so um, for those of you who are super smart and have encountered this problem before, you'll know exactly what just happened. For those of you that haven't spent as much time as me doing this, I will explain what just happened was <laughs> that this import bus was most certainly not configured properly and as soon as the the system received power it just started sucking everything out of the reactor okay so that would have been really 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 terrible if it had been um, pre-cooked or if the reactor had had any heat going in it because that would have just blown up the entire thing so lesson learned there ladies and gentlemen um, so our reactor has powered off. It's turned off our ME system, which, as we just saw, works like a charm, like a charm. But now all that stuff is stuck inside my ME system, and I can't get it. So uh, I'm just gonna use this so I can so I can get my stuff back. Oh, that is not. Oh, I kind of handicapped myself in this regard, didn't I? Generator, generator. Here we go. We're going to use a super getaway to restart our system really quick because I don't feel like moving everything. <laughs> Do that, and we're gonna we're gonna throw some uh, throw some coal in there. Okay, there we go. This thing is uh, not liking what I did. Oh, it's using too much power. And that would be an easy fix if... Okay, go away, go away. You are no good. You are no good to me anymore. Okay, we're just going to do this. All right, let's, let's make this happen here. Okay. Um... Where are the green lights? Oh, dang it. There we go. <laughs> Yourself is garbage. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. So I'm going to have to take all this back out. All this crap back out. Because didn't have the foresight to see that problem coming and come on how many of you did let's be realistic here um, let me delete a few things so I can carry more I'm gonna take all this back out back out back out 17 of these one two three four okay so Shut this stupid thing back off, and let's re-inject our breeder. Such weird things happening. 
uh, just happen when you don't expect them to. The exact same thing happened to me in the Captain Corporation, which is why I knew it happened immediately. Where is the other LZH condensator? I probably deleted it. Whatever. There we go. Okay, we're going to put that in there. We're going to definitely want to put our heat plating back in so we can cook this baby up. Okay. Um, it managed to not use any coolant yet because these haven't been touched barely. Now we need to put this back on top of here. This back on top of here. Excuse me, I'd like that back, please. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. This back on top of here. We're going to switch this to 10 because this is important and it's closer to the bottom of the numerical system. Okay. Now, aside from wreaking mass chaos because that stupid import bus, this should work fine. And it does. Um, it picked up heat because of the incident earlier. Um, and I actually can see this through here. Um, these are being depleted. This is hardly going to use any LZ or uh, lapis at all, really. So that's not going to tax the system very much. Um, we're in a full cycle breeder reactor. And it's going to start re-enriching these cells, which we should definitely start seeing right now. There we go. Okay, it is going to take a while to get these things charged up because of the the setup of this breeder reactor. Um, there we go. This one's charging a little bit faster because it's between two of these, like I said before. Um, but that's going to start making stuff for us. And I, I am going to want to leave this on for as long as possible, but I can't leave it on yet until the import buses and export buses are configured properly. Um, so this is going to pull out, re-enrich uranium cells. That is the only thing I want to come out of this reactor is re-enrich uranium cells. Um, I will want to pull out near depleted cells that are a direct result of the um, clawed uranium cells running out. But it's not really necessary. The way that I have this set up, it's a manual, it's a manual refeed anyway. So having that export bus really doesn't do me much good in the long run. Um, so this is set to import re-enriched uranium cells back into the system and it's always going to be active and it's going to remove single items at a time so whenever one of these cells recharges the system's going to suck it back through and dump it into my AE. Alright, um, I don't need to configure the export buses quite yet. Um, this one actually, I'm just going to go ahead and, and put Lapis in here. Because that's that's no brainer there. Um, I'm going to further clog the system and say that I only want two stacks at all times. Because again, I'm looking for power conservation. And for this bus right here, I'm going to take coal cold dust, and I'm going to combine it again with, with a near depleted cell, just so I can get the exact um, item code. There we go. There we go. And this is going to inject new depleted isotope cells, okay? It's always going to be active, so as soon as one of these runs out, or as soon, excuse me, as soon as it recharges, it's going to get sucked out by this import bus here and it's going to be put in by this or a new one's going to be injected by this export bus. Now when these quad uranium cells run out which is the biggest problem of automating the breeders they're going to turn into near depleted cells and they're going to need to be ejected out of the system but the problem is Applied Energistics has no idea where to place items inside this GUI, the reactor GUI, once stuff is, has run out. So when these run out um, this export bus here is just going to start slamming depleted isotope cells into every slot here, which causes a shutdown of the breeder. Um, and if you did have it injecting new quad uranium cells, it could have the opposite effect and jam everything with quad cells, which in turn would result in a meltdown. Um, so 
automating breeders is not an easy task, but we seem to be up and running here. Everything's configured properly. This will work, um, provided we have some UU matter in the system, which we do not have UU matter in the system. We just have um, lapis, which is a good point. I'm glad I'm talking out loud here. I'm gonna take some. I'm gonna take some more of this, and actually, I'm gonna do the opposite of what I said. The only reason I'm doing this is so that while this breeder is running, I won't have uh, fear of it overheating or fear of the LDH condensators running out of charge. Okay. So we turn this back on. We have 240 EU per tick. Um, the ME controller is using 78, so phew, I, I've gone up a lot. I'm using a really good chunk of what's being produced by that. And these are not keeping up. Okay, so there's a huge problem right off the bat, and that's going to be something that we're going to have to overcome as we go along. Um, it may not be possible to power the entire factory with a breeder. I might have to divert some of the energy from the main reactor over there into um, some of the machines. Maybe I'll have to have it power the scrap machines. I'm not really sure. Um, that is that is a huge tax on the system. Um, if we see that happening, actually, if I disconnect this pipe right here and go back, we'll do some experimenting here. Um, my controller, <laughs> oh, is down to 26. I knew those scrap machines would be a problem. All right, so breeders back on. Let's check our power situation. Uh, let me see. Oh, you know why? You know why? Hold on, hold on, hold the phone. This is the issue right now. Okay, so once that's recharged, that's never going to have to happen again. Okay, so that's why these MFSUs are emptying so quickly. But for now, since the um, scrap machines are not hooked up yet, and since I'm running off a single reactor's power, I'm just going to leave it unplugged, and that's going to allow the ME system to use far less power. See, we're only at 40 U per tick. Okay, and when this is full, which it will be full soon, 7 million, so 2, 4, 6 million, plus 1 for the core is 7 million. That's what this thing is holding right now. Probably ex excessive overkill, but since, again, I'm paranoid, um, I just put three of them on there. I could add a lot more. Okay, here's the magic happening right now. This is this is awesome. Okay, okay. I can panic a lot less. These are loading up. They are going to take time to load up, and I will again not connect those scrap machines until I have these MFSUs full. And once the breeder is um, online and active and has pushed a bunch of the cells or the re-enriched cells back into the system, I'll be able to start using the system to re-enrich the cells to put back into the main reactor. So I'm bringing this, this facility online um, one step at a time. I'm not just going to preload this reactor, or I don't think I will anyway. I might change my mind later if this takes too long, but um, I'm not going to just preload that with the uranium cells. I will preload it with the LZH condensators. And um, I can actually show you guys that right now. Let me see here. Actually, let me just get let me just get the condensators. I'm gonna put them in. This is gonna be a, a high output reactor. Okay. Um, let me do this, 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 this. No, 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 no. This, this, this. Here, here. Ask me if I've done this much. Um, here, okay, and that's going to make a 4360 EU per tick nuclear reactor, um, safe nuclear reactor. There, there is a pattern to this. If you don't see it, it took me a while to see it, but you get two up here, two down here, one space between, one space between, and then the, these are evenly in an L shape. And what this pattern does is, is it never allows for more than four quad uranium cells to be in a straight line at any one time. And you can take a look at that for yourself. Um, three, four, three, three. Four, 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 two, three. Okay, so it never allows them to build up to um, create an excessive amount of heat. So that's going to be the main reactor design. 
And once we hook up the import and export buses to this thing, um, we'll start taking the cells that we're creating in the breeder reactor and pushing them over there, okay? So I believe we have made a significant amount of progress in this episode. Um, next episode, what we'll do is um, we'll wait for some more of these cells to re-enrich and just to get an idea of how long that's going to take. Um, we've ticked down about 1,500 so far. Um, that's, that's how far we've gotten. These LZH condensators are going to recharge, and I will wait for them to recharge so you can see how this is working on the inside. Um, they're going to recharge when they hit 7,000 damage, and that's going to happen right now, and you'll be able to see it. Let me take my mouse away. There you go. Charge and charge. Okay. So perfectly safe. This is going to run forever, or, or for two hours and 40 minutes more. It's going to make me a, a bunch of near depleted cells, and then we're going to start using those cells inside the main reactor chamber all right so this this is taking shape i like where we're going here it looks like it is going to be a self-sustainable reactor but only time will tell i guess because <laughs> the recyclers haven't been flipped on which is going to be a really scary prospect okay uh, make sure you check us out on our website it's the minecrafters.com i'm captain jack i am one of the minecrafters um facebook the facebook page is frequently updated and we're the minecrafters.com on facebook there as well um, submit any questions that you may have in the comments below or on Facebook. We'd be happy to get back to you as quickly as we possibly can. And as always, guys, thank you for watching and stay poised.